I love filming on Fridays, Dan, because I'm in a good mood. Can you tell I'm in a good mood? Yes. I'm in a good mood, it's Friday, and I've got the weekend off for a change. And you've let me out of the office. And I've let you out of the office. And today we have got a lovely 2008 Princess 45. Now this is another one of our part exchanges. Now for those of you that don't understand the boat industry, which includes myself, we do actually own a lot of these boats. Some people broker them, where they act as the agent, which we do as well, and some companies like ours actually own the boats. So we took this in part exchange against a Princess 49 flybridge, didn't we? Do you remember? Um, and it's just arrived by sea, and it's also just arrived with this one, Dan. Have you seen this one? Come, if you stand back over here, it looks, it looks better from the side, I think. This is a, uh, no it's not, it's a Fairline, F-Line 33, and it's the first one we've ever taken in. So I've just taken that in, we've taken that in. What's that one? That one's just arrived, what's that? Uh, oh, Bav oh, it's a Bavaria R40 that arrived a couple of nights ago. So what happens in the boat industry, if the weather's bad, nothing arrives, because the sea's too rough, isn't it, Dan? Yep. But when the sea's quiet, they come up like an armada. They come, didn't they? That day there was three, didn't they? Three arrived? Anyway, I'm waffling. This is a Princess 45, and I love these boats. It's got a bit of a funny name. I don't know how you even pronounce it. Taito Alba 2. I'm sure it means something to someone, but I do not know what they're on about. Now, in the hierarchy, because I like to talk about the hierarchy. In the hierarchy, you right there, Dan? Don't trip, son. Watch that wire. Watch that wire. In the hierarchy of brands princess sits at the top of the tree with fairline and sunseeker and also there are some other brands that are very good too like uh, azimut like san lorenzo i'm not going to name them all and i don't want a load of abuse in the comments that i didn't mention your boat because there's lots of good quality boats but in the business we're in the top three brands that we're selling every day are princess fairline and sunseeker um, and I'm talking about cruisers here, proper cruisers. Of course, we sell jet skis, we sell Williams, we sell Parkers, we sell Sea Rays, we sell everything from 5,000 to 5 million. But in the cruiser segment, these are our bread and butter. And so these boats make me really excited. So let's jump on board. Okay, because this is a 2008 boat, it was pre high low platforms. So it's got a lovely platform, but it doesn't go up and down. And how you get your dinghy on is use this passerelle, not a parasol, Dan. I've heard you call it a parasol. Have you called it a parasol? A parasol is like for when you're outside having a beer in the beer garden. This is a passerelle and it lifts the dinghy and puts it on the platform. Are you laughing? And while you're here, we're gonna look, that's a high-low platform. That's on the Bavaria that's just arrived. And we'll, we'll try and do a video on that next week if I get time. And by the way, I know sometimes you say, I haven't done a video for ages. We actually do have a day job, don't we, Dan? We do. And that's just messing around with boats. <laughs> right, let's jump on this boat and have a look. Okay. So, let's go inside. The canvas is in good order. And like all the boats I show you, it's for sale. And we love part exchanges. So if you've got a part exchange, you want to move up to this lovely princess, then send us an email, sales at boats.co.uk. Come on, come in board, Dan, come on board. Okay, so coming to the cockpit, and it just oozes quality and coziness, this princess. And this boat is also shaft drive. As I've explained before, you can have out drive, you can have outboard, you can have IPS, you can have Zeus drive, and you can have shaft drive. And there's probably some more, but this is, in my opinion, the best way to propel a boat. It's not the most efficient, but it's the safest. The boat plows through the sea, the back is slightly down, the bow is slightly up, and it really is good. And it's good because it's simple. There's an engine, there's a gearbox, there's a P-bracket, there's a rudder, it all works. So, We've taken this in part exchange and it's priced at a very reasonable 289,950 UK VAT paid. So before I go inside, it's got some lovely carpet. I'll take my shoes off and I've got some new socks, Dan. Now, 
they are sent from a customer, and the clue is in the blue bit. He lives in Manchester, and he bought a Targa 47, and he said, I'm going to get you some socks. So it says things, it says things like sound, sound, it just sound, sound, make us a brew, um, and lots of other things. Got pictures of factories. Anyway, I think it's all to do with Manchester. There's something else there. I can't really read what it says. Yeah, anyway, they're very comfortable. So thank you very much, Neville. <laughs> and uh, I'll wear these for the next week. Come inside. Okay, so the first thing is when you get on a quality boat like a Princess or a Fairline or Sunseeker, the door handle. Look at the door, Dan. Look at this door, look at this toggle. Look at this latch, look at the latch. Remember this is 2008, so what's that? Is that 15 years old? Everything is solid. And that is, the saying is you get what you pay for. Have you heard of that, Dan? Absolutely. Right, come in. So, I cannot underestimate the warmth and coziness on this cold December day that this boat exudes. Look at the quality of the woodwork. And as you know, we used to be a princess dealer. So I've seen this all being made. It's got Eberspatcher heating. It's got the gentleman's drinks cabinet. Look at this, with glasses don't fit. Now, that's a one-shot wonder, but just look at the attention to detail. It's got a barometer and a clock. I think they're princess ones. I can't tell. The wood has got a lovely, rich gloss to it. The leather will be the finest leather. Okay, the TV's not the finest, it's an LG. But you know, you get the gist. It's a really well-built boat. And this carpet, Dan, is very soft, isn't it? Now, if you're being pernickety, don't zoom in too much. If you're being pernickety, you'd probably change it, wouldn't you? <laughs> But it's, it's lovely, it's soft, it's got underlay, the ceiling's in good shape, it's a lovely, lovely boat. Now, before you see it on the screen, I'm going to tell you this boat has got one problem, hasn't it? The heat from the sun damages these dashboards, and the dashboard is black, which it should be, because you don't want it to reflect. So if in my shots you see the dashboard looks a bit grotty, we're not going to zoom in, it's because it is. And we are in the process of fixing it. We have to repaint the dashboard. We have to do things like that to make the boats look nice. So if you see it before we've done that, you can't say I haven't told you. So let's go to the lower helm. Yeah, Dan said I shouldn't have mentioned the dashboard. You did, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, but I just, I know we're fixing it, well, it's but, well, it's bad, let's be honest. But I know, I know, it looks bad, but we're fixing it, and it is a common problem. We, it's, we didn't make the boat. We didn't make the boat, Sam. It's a design issue with the boat. Right, lower helm, come and sit next to me. They've got lovely bucket seats. You can grab that one. Okay, so the first thing is, we've got a lovely shout window. And I like it because, what do I that is? A bit of rubber. Because it's big, and it's manual. Oh, get the fenders in! So that is full marks it's got the lovely throttles from Volvo Penta I love these throttles and the reason I love these throttles as you put that head look how can you see down stand behind me it's just slightly bent you see it's bent that way and what that does that as you put it forward it kicks the boat round exactly the same way as the handles bent did you know that I think I, I told you a few you, times you have. yeah the dashboard is like an old Bentley um, everything's laid out beautifully not ostentatious, just really lovely, laid out. The old fashioned keys, because it's 2008. Obviously the screen on my phone is bigger than the GPS, but it could be upgraded. The instruments here are laid out beautifully, as is the compass, and look at the view out towards the bar in, on this cold December morning. Top marks for a beautifully laid out dashboard and lower helm. We are going to do the galley, son. <laughs> Crikey, these Manchester socks are slippery. Right, this is the galley. Now, we're not going to spend long in the galley because it's not massive. But it's slightly down from the saloon and it's very... down. if you stand here and look back that way, we can show people the how... Well, I'd say how 
close it is to the saloon and passing food and what have you. Double sinks, fridge. The fridge door is missing. We're fixing it, it yeah? No, no, we've got it. Oh, we got it? Yeah, yeah. Why is it on? Pre we've designed it. To took it off. No, no, we've got it. Oh, we've got the door. We're fixing yeah, the door. So put, it put it back on. Yeah. Got a hob. We've got lots of cupboards. I'm not going to open all the cupboards. Got cupboards all down here. It's all very nice. Let's go down to the accommodation. So, this boat, remember it's a Princess 45 flybridge, amazingly has three cabins. We've got one at the bow, which is the master, because this boat predates the mid-master mid -master, master. And we've got a bunk bedroom here, which I'll show you, and a twin here. But before we do that, I'm just gonna show you the switch panel, which I love because it's just simple switches. Simple switches, easy to fix, easy to understand, and it doesn't go wrong. So let's go to the master. Okay, it's a little bit snug in here, but this is the master cabin, and it's got a big double bed. It's got lovely curved wood. Curves add cost, and it's got lovely space there. It's got little nookies and crannies everywhere. Got a wardrobe here that I can't open. I don't know where the button is for that. Must be somewhere. And you've got a Jack and Jill door behind you there, Dan, to the heads, which we will quickly just show you it, it's not massive in here but they've packed it in haven't they um, um wait, right do it again how can i get in all right you have to go in there son right now i think is this got one of these yeah, yeah okay right so it's got a it's got a little little f switch here God almighty. Right, there you go. Oh, oh. Right, we're in. Okay, um, it's tight, I'll be honest, but it's very, very nice, it's snug. Remember, I'm quite big, I need to lose some weight. However, the bathroom itself does pass the floss test. And look at this cabinetry. going on here? Toilet roll holder. We've got a razor point, we've got a toilet roll holder, we've got a teaspoon, we've got a creaky floor. Oh, right. What did you do? Oh. I'll leave that to someone else. The bathroom's very nice, apart from that catch. catch. So just forward of the master, you've got your day head. Dan will just put his head in there to show you that which is nice, so your guests on board during the day can use that toilet. And then walking aft to the port side, we have this lovely, 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 lovely <laughs> twin bunk bedroom, which is very snug. And look at the TV, I had to laugh at the TV. Look, the surround's bigger than the screen. <laughs> I'd probably modernize that if I was you. Lovely portholes. And then in this cabin here, we've got the twin which I'm sure you can have an infill and it makes it into a double. So let's have a quick look at the flybridge and then I'm gonna go through the cost for you. All right, come on up with me. We're gonna go look at the flybridge. You can come around here, Dan, actually. I thought you said you got all the covers off, son. You didn't say about the flybridge. Okay, so we haven't taken the flybridge covers off because it's been an icy cold morning, it's in December. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna show you a picture of the flybridge and I'll just, trust me, it's a lovely flybridge, I promise you. So let's run through the costs. Okay, so we're gonna go through the costs now. Section one is buying the boat. This boat is our stock and we have priced it very competitively at 289,950. 30% um, deposit would be 86,985 which gives a finance advance, if you borrow the money, of 202,965. That gives you a payment per month of 2693, and that's based on a 10-year straight line repayment, no balloon, and about 10.72% APR, which is how it is these days, guys. It's, uh, it was cheaper a few years ago. Finance per annum, 32,000 pounds. Okay, so fuel. At 20 knot speed, this boat will burn about 100 litres per hour for both engines. Diesel price in December 23 is £1.55 in the UK per litre. The cost is about £155 per hour. 
Average UK use is about 50 hours, and that gives an adjusted cost of about £7,750 per year. Section 3 is fixed costs. Uh, to berth this boat in the UK and Southampton area is about 8250 Servicing is a very reasonable 2500 and the reason that is, is because it's shaft drive. Each engine needs oil and filters, there's no pods. Sometimes you have to change the cutlass bearings, but not on an annual general maintenance, so it's quite reasonable. Other maintenance, £3,000 per annum, anti-fouling, polishing, that kind of thing. Insurance is about £3,000 as well. Gives you a total fixed cost of about £16,750. Okay, section four is variable costs. Depreciation. Well, it's difficult at the moment because it's busy one week and quiet the next, and different models sell and don't sell. Um, I'm going to estimate depreciation at £15,000 for the next 12 months on this boat. Fuel is, we've done that previously, 7750 Finance, we did that earlier, is 32334 which gives a total variable cost of about fifty five grand. Okay, so the last section is JB's measure of pleasure. Accommodation, well, to pack three cabins in a 45-footer, I think it's really clever. They are cosy. But what's wrong with being cosy? Nine out of 10. Style, we'll show you a picture of the outside. She's a very good looking boat. Obviously it's an older boat now, but it's one of those classics that won't go out of fashion. So I'm gonna give it seven out of 10. Fun, well it's, all boats are fun, but this is not gonna be as much fun as a sack store with twin 300s on the back. So it's seven out of 10 for fun. Running costs, well, I think they're quite reasonable for a boat of this age, and that's because of the shaft drive. So nine out of 10 are running costs. Quality, well, everywhere you look, it's beautifully made, like the Fairlines, like the Sunseekers and some other brands. So nine out of 10 on quality, you'll really appreciate that. And the total is 41 out of 50, which is 82%. And in summary, I would say this is a really good boat for the older couple who want to go cruising around the seas and enjoy quality, enjoy good sea keeping. Um, and it's just a lovely, lovely boat to own. And we've got it for sale and you can buy it and I'll take your part exchange. Right, so let's go look at the flybridge. You did that on purpose, didn't you? <laughs>